Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to class. Um, today, we're going to do a little bit of work with a tennis ball, right? Just a basic old tennis ball. Um, and to work on some of the muscles and some of the muscle tension uh, that we can um, get just from life, right? Um, other things you can use is like a lacrosse ball. Those are a lot more dense. Um, and um, and if the tennis ball is too much, um, you can use a little soft, like a little bean baggy kind of thing um, that can work. Um, so just any option, anything that feels good. Uh, the thing to remember with a, when we play with the tennis ball is um, um, it can be, uh, it can really get into some tender spots, but you have control. So how much weight you put on the tennis ball, how much you move, all of that stuff is completely up to you. And if the pain turns into, I can't breathe, right? If the, if the discomfort, I'll say that turns into really uncomfortable uh, pain, um, then you take the tennis ball out, right? Because it's just the tennis ball. So you don't have to use it. I would suggest that maybe you take a little small pillow or a blanket and put it underneath your head. Have your tennis ball nearby. We're going to come on down to our backs. <sighs> and once you get <clears throat> settled in here, if it is okay for you, I want you to take the legs into Baddha Konasana. If that is too much this morning, go ahead and grab your blocks and place them underneath your knees or underneath your thighs. And then take the arms and just let the elbows bend. The arms are overhead, but it's a big, deep bend of the elbows. Your palms are face up so that both the shoulders and the hips are kind of in this open position. Be sure to readjust the tailbone, the sacrum, so that you are not overarching your back. And again, if this is too much, um, either put blocks under the legs or place a blanket underneath the hips to ease this uh, stretch. Because it's a, it's a decent stretch for if you haven't been moving much yet this morning. The head, the neck are neutral. The chin is level. And we're gonna allow the breath to move our bodies naturally. So as we inhale, you'll feel maybe some tightening in places. And as you exhale, the body softens a little bit more into the stretch. So just pause here. And imagine that there is nothing else you need to do. We're just taking the breath in and exhaling it out. Noticing the thoughts that run through the mind as we lay here. Noticing the desire to do more, to get moving, to go back to bed, whatever it is for you. And just breathe. Good. One more breath right here. And then take the arms to cactus pose. And as you inhale, just press the back of the arms into the floor a little bit more. And then as you exhale, bring the knees and the elbows together. Inhale as you open. Exhale, squeeze and close. Good, three more, inhale. Exhale, squeeze it together. Inhale, open. Exhale, squeeze. And last one, inhale. 
Exhale, squeeze it together. And then let those arms come down. Let the legs go straight. Pause here. Press your hands into your mat. So press the palms of the hands into the mat. Draw the shoulders back. Squeeze your hips and glutes. Maybe your knees lift off a little bit as you press down through the heels of your feet. So you're just tightening everything up toward the ground, toward center, pressing down, squeezing in, and let go, everybody. Whew. Good. Just one more like that. The feet straighten. The heels dig in. The legs get active. The glutes the belly, the backs of the arms, the shoulders. Breathe, keep pressing, keep pressing as if you could lift yourself off the ground here. And let go, nice job. Bring one knee to chest, just stretch here. The other leg is nice and long. Release that and go to the other side. Ah. <sighs> Good, release that, both knees bent, grab your tennis ball. All right, so I just wanted to get us a little bit loosened up before we started. So you're gonna take your tennis ball, we're gonna work upper body to start. You're gonna take the tennis ball in your left hand. You're gonna lean over toward the left and wrap your arm, your left arm around your shoulder, around your opposite shoulder. And you're just going to reach and put that ball underneath your right shoulder. Now, the thing about tennis balls, they don't go on bones, just generally speaking. They're on muscle. It's sitting there in that one. You're going to find a little tender spot. And then you're going to shift your hips back to neutral. So both hips are on the ground. And you're just going to pause for a second here. When we work with tennis balls, um, the work can be really intense, right? It's like getting a really deep massage. Uh, we're working with some trigger points here, some acupuncture points. So we always start relatively easy. So you're going to just kind of move that side around a bit until you find kind of the, the, the most tender spot reasonably and then you're going to settle in relax your jaw the head is neutral if you need to bring the head up a little bit more go ahead and take a moment to do that and then the choice here is what whether or not you move your right arm so you can take the right arm starting kind of out to a little cactusy pose and then bring it across the chest Whew. Yep, and then out, I know, this is great work though. I actually was doing this yesterday and the day before because I had a headache and it just wouldn't let up. And so I got on the floor with a couple tennis balls and it seemed to really help. So maybe your arm is going back and forth. Maybe it's going up over your head. I've got my elbow bent and then down toward the belly. Just a few passes here. You can spend a long time on this tennis ball. So relax your arm back down. Just roll the body a little bit and find another tender spot. We're working in mostly in the upper trapezius uh, muscles, the ones that come down from the shoulders, right? The trapezius uh, attaches all the way up at the neck all the way up at that occipital ridge. So if you feel some radiation or sensation going up your neck, generally speaking, that's pretty normal. If it feels real numbing or weird that way, then I would lessen the weight. You can lighten the weight of the tennis ball just by lifting your shoulder. So you find that other tender spot, make sure you're not on the spine. And then maybe you move that arm again, maybe three times in one direction. Good, another breath. And maybe out to the side. Just breathe, relax everything else. Good. 
And then relax that right arm down, reach with your left hand, grab your tennis ball and take it out. Ooh. <laughs> That's great fun. Same side. I want you to reach under your armpit. So you're going to ball this in your left hand, reach under your right armpit and go to the divot kind of where your back muscle and your shoulder muscle meet, right? So it's, you'll find it once you start to open that right arm back out, the ball is just going to sit in this little hole um, where the shoulder and the back meet. And this may or may not be tender for you. You can kind of move the ball around. So this time, once it's there, maybe you move the elbow up and down. Again, I'm kind of in a cactus arm. Deep breath, everybody. For some, this feels really good. For some, this is a pretty tender spot as well. I know you're smiling and breathing. Don't hold your breath. Good. Just one more little cactus arm here. This is where Terry's minor is, one of the rotator cuff muscles. And then reach over, grab your tennis ball. Last one on this side, you're going to take the tennis ball in your left hand. You're going to lean way over on that left side. You're going to come a little bit closer to the spine. Still in the upper back, you can turn your head to the left to find it. Right, to get in there a little bit better. Hoo -hoo. And then you're going to start to move that weight back towards center. This is where I talked about you have control. The more to the left you lean, the more the less weight there is on the tennis ball. Ooh. Again, if you need more support for your head or your neck, just tighten up your blanket a little bit. So, and then your choice. One, you stay where you are. Breathe. Maybe you lift the hips and roll down. I'm talking about a quarter of an inch. Stay off the bony spine. You're on the muscles right inside that spine. These are rhomboids. These are erector spinae, spinae muscles, right? The muscles that support the spine. And then you can do just like a little weird, it's a pelvic tilt, but it's almost like a... a supine cat cow to roll up and down just you're only rolling an inch or two oh yeah so right we wonder why our backs hurt and then we feel all this tension and we go oh, this might be why my back hurts <laughs> good breathe everybody and then find the most tender spot of this and pause Turn your head side to side. Hang in there with me. I promise we'll get moving. And come to center. Lean over to your left side. Grab the tennis ball out. And come to your back. And then just move your right arm around, like do little circles, bring it up to the ceiling, back behind you, out to the side, and soften that up a little bit. All right, good. We're going to go to the other side. I'm just going to turn so that if somebody comes in late, they may or may not see the tennis ball that we're working with. So this time we're working on the left side. The tennis ball is in your right hand. You're going to lift your left shoulder. You're going to reach behind and drop that tennis ball underneath your on the inside of your of your um, shoulder blade, right? And you're going to find that tender spot. Oh. So a lot of times, neck pain, jaw pain, you know, back pain, all of that is due to, to habitually tight muscles. And if we can address those sometimes, oh, it can really help. So find your tender spot, everybody. Whew, find your breath. Maybe you take the arm out to cactus. Maybe you go, no way, no how. I'm barely hanging in there as it is. 
And then again, optionally, maybe you move the ball or the elbow across the body, the arm across the body. So a little cross friction work. If you've had any kind of deep or neuromuscular massage work, you know what I'm talking about. Don't forget to breathe here, everyone. And then maybe that arm goes overhead and you sweep it down to the belly. Go slow, be willing to explore. <sighs> maybe you notice which side is tighter. And then relax that arm. Maybe you find another tender spot right along that scapula, that shoulder blade. Breathe. You can do little elbow circles here. It's really fascinating if you can handle the, the discomfort, how much work you can do and how much money you can save by using a tennis ball. <laughs> All right, good. Everybody breathe. Reach behind your left shoulder. Take that tennis ball out. Pause for a second. And then tennis ball in your right hand, go under your left armpit, find that little hole, that little pocket where the shoulder, it's the deltoid muscle meets the back and see what you can find there, if anything. A lot of times I'll outstretch my arm and I can find my tender spot kind of in there. So sometimes we find a tender spot, we're like, oh, that's not good. If you have an injury, that is true. But if it's just tender from muscle work, you can play there. And then again, maybe move that arm around. Maybe take your arm, your shoulder into internal and external rotation, right? And just notice, notice any tension. Notice if you feel this other than where the ball is. Maybe you do little tiny circles. <laughs> My ball is trying to get away from me here. Good. And grab the tennis ball. Take it out. Pause. Tennis ball's in your right hand. Lean the lift and lean over toward the right. You're going to come in closer to the spine. It's probably about as far as you can get that tennis ball. Your head is turned to the right. That's going to help. And then you're going to start to lean on that tennis ball. Oh, yeah. I hear a lot of groaning over there. <laughs> so, so this is usually a more tender spot. So I want you to just pause. Don't feel like you got to be moving around a lot. Right, maybe you find one spot and then you lean and then you roll to a new spot. Remember that the more you lean toward the right, the less pressure, therefore the less discomfort. And then if you're willing to slowly turn the head to one side and turn it to the other, whew, and turn and turn it. Oh. And then do that little weird kind of cat-cow arching to get higher and tucking to get lower on the tennis ball. Oof, I know. This is quite tender for me. It's telling me I need to do a little more work here. Good, last one. Move your arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry this is all we're doing for class no <laughs> and then release it lean over grab that tennis ball put it off to the side Whew. and move that arm so just move it up circle it out right and then back up just like you're doing little arm circles on the floor change your direction and then go to cactus arms again and squeeze the shoulders in or the elbows in and then open, squeeze in and open. Good, one more, squeeze in 
and open and then draw your knees to your chest roll your knees to one side and come on up i find that works so interesting <laughs> so just kind of gauge how you feel later right later like tomorrow keep moving those shoulders inhale take the arms up exhale one hand down the other one over i want you to reach over the knee and then big circle take it up stretch the side reach over your knee and circle just one more up side reach and circle take the arm up squeeze the other one up soften turn your palms forward and then press the arms down like you're trying to press something to the ground press into your knees your legs wherever you are and reach up exhale press it down like squeeze it down and up good just one more here press it down like you're trying to push something down to the floor and up turn your palms face each other the other hand comes down good soften through the head the neck reach over your knee circle the arm inhale up over reach and swing last one first reach up and then reach over find the knee and squeeze take it up take the other arm up turn the palms forward press down and inhale up press down squeeze everybody and up press down come halfway up turn the palms to face each other squeeze back and forward touch good just three squeeze back and forward Woo. and last one squeeze back and forward bend the elbows take the hands the elbows together lift until the elbows want to come apart breathe and then down open it up interlace press out take it up and exhale Whew. good job everybody shake that all out and let's come to table pose table pose if you need a blanket underneath your knees um, please do that your blocks can be near the front of your mat we're probably going to use those Good, spread the fingers, you know all of that, right? The inner elbows go toward the direction of your thumbs, your knees are underneath your hips. And then a few cats and cows here, stretching out the back body and then opening it back up again. Good, exhale as you curl in, inhale as you lift. Good, three more. Use the breath, everyone. And when you come into cow, see if you can lift that chin, stretch the front of the neck. Last set here. And lift. And come to neutral. Take your knees a little bit wider. Take your left hand toward the center of your mat. And I say toward because it's not all the way. It's kind of depends on how wide your hands normally are. I tend to go wide. So I walk my left hand in maybe one hand print and take the right arm up and then circle it forward. Reach it back and circle forward. Good, nice and slow again, right? Range of motion with the shoulders and breathe. And then take that arm up and hold it. Exhale, just circle under, but don't go down and reach up again. It's like a floating eye of the needle and up. Good, last one right here. And up, hold, don't lift the chin. Keep it nice and neutral. Exhale, hand down. Good. Reposition the hands and then walk the right hand in. Just a hand printer. So the knees wide help you move through your twist here. That's why our knees are wide. 
So same thing with the other hand. I want you to take it up, reach it back, circle, and breathe, right? Find that range of motion. Good, one more circle. And then take the arm up and do that little floating eye of the needle, circle it under and look, but then bring it right back up and circle under and up. Good, last one, circle and back up. Oh, hold your stretch for a second and let that one go. Plant both of your hands, flip your toes under, come to downward facing dog. Once you're in down dog, everybody, just pedal, pedal out the feet. I don't think I ever go into my first down dog without moving my feet, stretching out the Achilles, the calf muscles. Breathe. And then take your feet a little bit wider. Draw the hips back nice and far. Press through your hands. And then tuck your chin as if you were going to look at your chest. <laughs> And then lift the chin and look at your thumbs. Good. Tuck. And lift. Go gentle here, especially if you have neck issues. Good. One more. Tuck. <laughs> and look at your thumbs. And then come back to that nice neutral. Lower your knees to the floor. And step forward with your right foot. And here's where you can grab your blocks. Can take those blocks up at the second level and find your first nice low lunge. Maybe you come into a nice solid lunge and then straight in the front leg, lift the toes and stretch, bend the knee and open. Good. So, right, when we move the body like this, I always think about lubricating the joints, like getting the muscles warmed up and moving, getting the joints warmed up and moving. Good. Last one. And find the lunge. And then square your lunge right from the pelvis. Take your hands to your knees. Find that. Find your breath, engage the back glute. Inhale the arms up, the palms are forward. Palms are forward. Good, press through your back foot, find your stability. As you exhale, you're gonna drop down and press the palms back. Inhale, reach up. Maybe you lift up high, stretch the belly. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. We have just one more, exhale down, inhale the arms up, turn the palms back together towards each other, hands come down to your blocks. Just bring both hips back, slide your right foot back and slide your right foot or your left foot forward. Again, make sure your pose is wide enough, your knee is taken care of. You're finding that first lunge. Your hands are on your blocks. Inhale as you lift. Exhale, squeeze back. Maybe you lift your toes, stretch the hamstrings. And inhale. And exhale, everybody. Good. Inhale. Exhale. A few more, just like this. Just find your rhythm. Find your stretch. Breathe, notice, good, last one, and then bend the front knee, take your hands to your knee, square the hips, the pelvis, engage your back glute, feel the shoulders, take the arms up, palms are facing forward, and then bow down as you reach those arms back. Inhale it up, exhale down, one more, inhale, exhale down, inhale the arms up, turn the palms to face each other, the hands come back down, set your blocks aside, plant 
the hands and step back to down dog. And breathe. And just shake the head like you're saying no. And shake the head. Again, gentle here, especially if you have trouble with uh, vertigo. Yes. And then pause and sink into your down dog. Remember to keep the shoulders active, the upper back active, so we don't fall through the shoulder joints. Take your feet wide on your mat. Walk your hands back, one hand print at a time. The feet are parallel, the knees bend. Take your hands to your knees and come halfway up. Draw the shoulders back, draw the elbows back. Push into your legs to stand all the way up. <sighs> and roll it out, everybody. Right, so upper back or upper back and shoulder work today. You're simply going to take one hand, the palm is facing back, and reach the arm up so the palm is facing forward. <sighs> and then press it back and reach. Here's the thing about this, and it's a, it has to do with a lot of the poses in yoga, like chaturanga even down dog to a point if we go back too far and roll the shoulder joint forward right um we're missing the action of engaging the back muscles back deltoid back shoulder so try not to deep dive the front shoulder take it up and just press it back good up and press back one more just up and press back. You can tell that's our move of the day. Shake that out. Other side, take it up and press it straight back. And notice if you start to lean forward or dive that shoulder forward, press it back. Where will it go for you? And press back. Two more. Up and down. Last one. And down. Press it back and shake it out. Good. Shake out your wrists. Shake out your shoulders. You don't need your blocks. Well, have them near you. Have them near you. All right. Inhale, everybody. Front of your mat. Take it up. Exhale all the way down. Soften the knees and step back right leg. You're either going to drop your right knee to the floor or you're going to keep it up. A little bit more balance challenge here. Take your hands to your knee. And come on up to a high lunge. Squeeze through the back leg. Engage the belly here. The palms go up. I want you to move a little slower this time. We are working on balance. You're going to lean forward. Press back. Breathe. Good. Inhale. We're doing three. Exhale. Inhale, Woo. exhale, listen up. While you're down here, I want you to take your right hand to the floor, circle your left hand up and come into a twist. And breathe. And then circle the left arm down, step back to down dog, shake it all out. Come to plank pose. Shake out that head and neck. Don't let the tension get there. Find your breath. Lower the knees. Elbows train in. Come on down, chaturanga. To either sphinx or cobra. I wouldn't do up dog just yet. Take your breath. Tone the belly in, lengthen the tailbone, right? Find your breath, everybody. And then lower down. Hands come under shoulders. Press up to plank if you can. To down dog. Right foot forward. You're going to find that lunge again. Your left knee is up or down. Hands come to knee and come on up and just see if you can find your stability here, right? 
back glute is active, the hips are level. I always tone in this low belly. <sighs> Inhale, you know what you're doing. Palms are forward. Exhale. If this is throwing you off too much, just stay high or don't come as low. Whew. Breathe. <sighs> Inhale it up, everybody. Whew. Exhale it down. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Stay here. Your left hand goes to the mat or your left fingertips. The right arm goes up. We find ourselves in a lunge. Twist. Breathe. Don't overshoot the shoulder. Judy, Judy. Yep. Breathe. Exhale. Hands down. Step back to down dog. Listen up. Hold here. Find your breath. One, you're here. You're going to stay right here. Two, you're going to release your right hand to your left leg. Shoulder work. Release that hand back. Switch left hand to right leg. And down dog. Lower your knees to the floor. Press back into any style of child's pose you would like. Just breathe. All right, come on up, everybody. <laughs> Table pose. Downward facing dog. Feet wide. Hand print back. Draw the shoulder blades back. Bend the knees, lift up from the head, chest, neck. And all the way up and roll it out. <laughs> How's that feeling, right? It's an interesting thing to try to work through these tense muscles and um, both loosen them up, but strengthen them at the same time, right? It's this kind of fine line. So come on back to the front of your mat. We're going to add on to that little flow. So just be, again, very mindful. Inhale, reach up. Listen up. Exhale, hands to heart, chair pose. Whew. Right, so you're sitting back. You're toning in. You're lifting your chest. Inhale, the palms forward. As you exhale, drop the chest to the thighs and reach the arms back. Inhale, chair. Turn the palms. Exhale, down. One more, inhale, exhale, press. Let those hands go right to the floor from there. Step back, right leg. Maybe you drop the right knee to the floor, maybe not. Hands come to your knee. Take the torso up, inhale. Turn the palms forward, exhale. Inhale, up. Exhale down. Last one. Inhale up. Exhale down. While you're here, the right hand goes down. The left arm goes up. We find that twist. Breathe. Let the left hand come down. Step back. Down dog. Maybe you hang out. Right here. This is a sweet place to stay. Plank pose for everybody else. <sighs> Knees up or down. Chaturanga. Release to a low cobra or sphinx. Exhale. Plank. It's a dog. Pedal it out. <sighs> Step forward. Right leg. Step forward, left leg. 
Bend your knees, inhale it up. Exhale to your heart. Let the hands come down, mountain pose. Just breathe, just shake it out. How are we doing? Ooh, look at that time. Inhale, reach up. Heart, hands to heart. <laughs> heart, you know what I mean. <laughs> Tear pose. Ooh, shake out that head. Reach the arms out, turn the belly in. Good, when you're ready, press back. Inhale up. Remember, use those muscles, press back. Inhale up. Last one, press it back. Take your hands right to the floor. Step back, left leg. This is our last flow. Hands to knee. Lift up. Find that. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale. Go slow. Exhale. Last one. Big deep breath. Exhale. Left hand down, right arm floats up. We're back in that lunge twist. Big deep breath, everyone. Exhale, hand down. Step back, down dog. Whew. Plank pose. Chaturanga. Cobra, Sphinx. Child's pose. So when you're in child's pose, kind of keep in mind when the arms are outstretched, the shoulders are active. But when the head is overly dropping, you're also going to create tension in the muscles there. So I either like my hands underneath my forehead or even soft fists, one stacked on top of the other to get a little bit more no, uh, neutral spine uh, without that over drop, that over stretch at the back of the neck. Good, find your breath, everybody. And when you're ready from child's pose to table, from table to down dog, feet wide, hands back. <laughs> it's like shorthand for, uh, for yoga, hands back. <laughs> Hands to knees, <laughs> lift up. Come on up, everybody. Most of you have taken classes with me for so long, you already know. <laughs> I don't even have to use full sentences. All right, shake it out, everybody. Whew. All right, so come back to the front of your mat. Grab your blocks. Place them at that nice high level. <clears throat> Left foot forward, right foot back. Not big, not too far, right? Not too long. So pyramid pose here. Again, drawing the hips relatively centered, relatively forward, but I still always kind of bring that zipper up from pubic bone to belly button. And then take the torso forward and let the hands come to your block. Readjust your line, right? Your legs your distance from there. Ideally, your back heel is planted. It isn't for everybody, but ideally it is. Your toes are just angled out a little bit. The torso is really long here. And the left hip, the front, four, the front leg's hip, draws back in space. Now, fire up the back leg and breathe and just notice how does this feel in your body you're going to take the right hand block and turn it down one level one level so it's at the second height instead of all the way 
Going to take the left arm and reach it forward. And then careful here, you're going to circle that arm up to come into a twist. The secret here is to press into your back foot really strong. This is a modification of reverse triangle. Breathe. Exhale, hand down. Ah. Your hand can go back on your block. Your other block can go up nice and tall tall. Careful here. Bend your front foot or front knee. Step forward and then step back with the left leg. Again, find the pose itself, right? Find the length through the torso. See if you can take the rounding out of the back body and breathe. Take your left hand block, turn it down to the second level. Way more stable there. Reach the right arm forward and then take that arm up. Easy, easy. Try to stay from the center line of the chest to the fingers and breathe. Push through the back leg. Exhale, let it come down. Take both blocks high. Bend the front knee, step forward. Bend both knees and come on up. Exhale down. Roll your shoulders. Just turn the head side to side easy. Good. Shake it out. Inhale. Reach up. Exhale. Hands to your blocks. Step back with your right leg. Warrior two. So we're changing it up. Back foot turns to the side, front foot is straight, front knee is straight, front hip rolls back slightly. Take your hand to your left knee, press up Mm -hmm. and breathe. And then take the palms together and touch and breathe. Open them up, turn the palms back, press back and forward and back. It's almost like you're doing this weird swim, like like you're treading in water, right? And out. Good, last one. Squeeze in. Press out. Good. Turn the palms down. Reach forward. Either forearm to thigh, extended side angle, or your block is maybe still there. Hand to block, arm over your ear, extended side angle. And breathe, push through your back leg. Circle all the way forward. Take your hands to your blocks. They're still up high. Turn your back foot straight, step forward. Shake out your hips. Last one, last side, step back with your left leg. Turn your foot to the side. Watch that front knee, right? Front hip rolls back. Your right hand to your knee, you press it up. I realize. I got no room, (laughs) breathe. I just turned around in case you're confused. Turn the palms forward, squeeze in, open up. Squeeze chest, right? Squeeze to the back. Last one, squeeze and open. Turn the palms down. You're either going to thigh or to outside, I'm not gonna go that low, so I'll hold on to my shin. Breathe, extended side angle. Take it all the way up. Turn all your toes in the direction you are facing and come into a forward fold. And breathe. When you're in this forward fold, if you can, I know some of you are staying halfway up, So I would have that neck neutral to that. But if your upper body is hanging down, supported with your hands, let your head hang. Let the weight of your head stretch the muscles of your neck. And then press halfway up, heel toe in everyone. Bend your knees, hands to knees, come on up and just shake everything out. 
Come on back to the front of your mat. <laughs> Inhale, take it up. Exhale down. If you can move your blocks out of the way, step back to down dog. Whew. Lower your knees to the floor. Whew. Come to a seat for a moment and grab your tennis ball. You may want your blanket nearby as well. For later. So you got your tennis ball. You're in a comfortable seat wherever you are. First, <laughs> first thing I want you to do is just take the tennis ball on your mat and roll the palm of your hand Ooh, on it, especially the thumb, right? That, that nice bulky part, that muscle of the thumb. Tell me that's not tender, Ooh, right? But all part, you know, it's kind of interesting whether or not you um, believe in acupuncture, acupressure, uh, what is the other, reflexology, right? There's all kinds of points in the hands and in the feet uh, that affect the rest of your body. And then take the tennis ball, whoop, can't do it on a slippery floor, onto the inside of your wrists and just roll. There's heart points, there's spleen points. Maybe you go up to your elbow and switch sides. I love working with props, can you tell? <laughs> so other hand, right? You're just pushing down on the mat. But uh, again, for me, the thumb, the muscle of the thumb is pretty tender. Uh, it's what we use a lot. So maybe you get into that with the tennis ball. Even the sides of the pinky. And then get into just the wrist area. And then start to move into the forearm a little bit. And let that go. Oh, that felt good, didn't it? That was like sweet. You're going to now, this I want to caution if you have any kind of port or uh, uh, insertion here from surgery, right? Um, that you need to be mindful. We're only going to work right underneath the collarbone. Um, so you're not getting into the breast tissue at all, but you're going to start where the collarbone and the sternum meet. There's a little divot there. And then you use the pressure just of your hand to start to roll out from the sternum, the, the breast bone, the chest bone, uh, out to toward the armpit. So you're underneath that collarbone and you can do little circles, you can move, you can get into that little corner here. So again, a lot of the, or not a lot, but a couple of the neck muscles come down and under the collarbone. So your neck is tight. And maybe that insertion point is tight. You would never do this on your neck, by the way. <laughs> Just say it in case you think that might be a good idea. <laughs> good. Come right to the sternum, right to the center. Now, this is an exception to the don't do a tennis ball to the bone, right? It's a nice solid bone. You're not getting into the breast or chest uh, muscle. Oof. Oh, yeah. Right? It's really amazing. And then take the ball in the other hand and go right over to the other side. <sighs> you can move your head, your neck. It all feels so good. You can get into that little divot right before the armpit, right? The pectoralis muscles come up and over and into the bicep muscle. So it's all connected. It's all there. Oof. And then back to the sternum and just little baby circles up and down. Just getting blood flow, right? And let that go. Good job, everybody. Keep hold of your tennis ball. Come on down. All right. So we did the upper body. We're going to soften the lower body. Again, this is all up to you. 
The first thing I want you to do, take the tennis ball in your right hand, lift your hips. You're gonna take the tennis ball to the point where your, where your sacrum meets your hip bone, right? Meets that um, the ilium, the top of the pelvis. So it's a, just a little area in the glutes. I'm trying to move my shirt in case you need a visual here. Um, and you're just going to start to roll around on the tennis ball along the inner line of uh, both your sacrum or, yeah, both your uh, sacrum and the rim of the pelvis. And the temptation is to go really fast, like <laughs> kind of sweep over it, but maybe you slow down just a little bit. And then work the tennis ball so it's back up at that corner, that inside corner where the sacrum and the uh, the pelvic, the top of the pelvis meets, the ilium. And then just go slow out to the side till you're almost leaning on the right hip and back over. Good, just one more sweep and back over. And then adjust the tennis ball so it is down about an inch and go out toward the hip and back out toward the hip and back. Go down another inch. We're getting into those external rotators of the hips, the piriformis, all those yummy muscles. And just kind of work down the glute a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and then grab your tennis ball, put it back in the center of that upper line, center of the upper line. One, you're here. Two, you're going to bring your knee, your right knee to your chest and straighten it out to the toward the floor. Bring it in. So again, we're working with a little movement through the muscle and in. Last one here, just sweep it straight. And bring it in, foot to the floor, grab your tennis ball, bring your butt back down to the floor. Take the tennis ball to the outside of your hip where that soft-ish muscle is, the tensor fasciolata, okay? And then all you're gonna do is drop the knees over to that side. Some of you, um, can lean onto it. I'm actually lifting my left hip and laying right on that right side. That can be pretty intense. So you can keep the hip down and just drop the knee and breathe. Remember you're in the muscle. You're not sitting on the hip joint itself. And release it. Ah, good. And just windshield wiper the legs. And I'll turn over just in case somebody needs to see where that ball is going. And then let's go to the other side. You're going to take the ball in your left hand, lift your hips and Come right to that midline, just off the the uh, stir, the sacrum, <laughs> and maybe little circles right there. As you just start to explore, where is it tender for me? If we have piriformis issues, and even sometimes um, um, sacroiliac joint, SI joint issues, this area can get pretty tender. So we're just checking it out. We're moving around. We're coming down the sacrum a little bit. Like you'll you'll notice when you play with the tennis ball where your stuck spots are, where your tension is. Good. And then come back to that high spot. And same thing. You're just going to roll the ball toward that outer hip a little bit. And you're going to roll it back in. And you're going to roll out. 
Now, if you are laying on your back and going, no way, no how, I'm sorry I didn't say this on the other side, um, I would do figure four here. So you'll stretch through the hip and then start working that tennis ball down a little bit, but do at least two passes on that, on each line across and then work it down. We're all going to be wondering why our butts hurt later <laughs> and work it down, right? Ooh. And then start to work yourself back up. Maybe go down and up the line of the sacrum itself, not on the bone. And then come right back to the top end for a second. Lean in. You can draw the left knee to chest and then straighten the leg. Good, just a couple. Bring it in and press it out. Your foot comes back to the floor. Take your ball out. Pause here for a second. And then the ball goes to the outer hip at that muscle. And you start to bring the knees over to the left. Or you lay on that tennis ball a little bit more. Deep breath. Tensor fascia lata. Breathe. And release that. Grab your tennis ball. Again, exception to the rule, lift your hips. Take the tennis ball to your sacrum. The sacrum is a solid, hard, bony structure. It can handle it much like the uh, sternum can. So just go ahead and roll around on your sacrum. It, again, if this is creating like pain that doesn't make sense to you or discomfort. I don't like pain. I'm not in pain here. It's uncomfortable, but it's not painful. Then lighten your load or take it out. Good. Come toward the top of that sacrum. And release. <laughs> Set your ball aside. Take the legs wide and do some windshield wiper movements here. And bring the feet back together. Take the tennis ball and just kind of let it drop between the legs so that you can grab it with your feet. And put the tennis ball under your left foot and start to roll here a little bit. You, you may not get enough traction here. What I would suggest is if you can, I would lift the hip. So your right foot is on the floor. Your left foot is on the ball. You're in this weird little bridge pose and you can move around that tennis ball a little bit or you can just find a spot and hold, engage that glute. <sighs> Breathe and lower, switch sides. First, get a good purchase on it. Maybe you lift the hips and roll on that ball a little bit. This is a great thing to do standing. By the way, a lot of you know this already. I use the tennis ball to roll out through the feet. It feels so good. Maybe you get right into that arch and hold and move it up. And lower, grab the tennis ball. Grab it with your hands. This one, um, this is our final tennis ball and it is optional. You're gonna take the tennis ball in your left hand and you're gonna bring it right to the, it's to your neck where your skull meets your neck, right? That line that we all get tender. I'm laying on my blanket so I have a little cushion here. And then I'm going to use my hand just to help 
kind of lay on the tennis ball. And once I get it where I want it, I can let go with the hand. For some, this is going to be too intense. You don't have to do it. You can cup the ball in your hand and just kind of do it that way, right? So there's, again, a little more control. Um, I like the tennis ball here because it's not too big and it's round. And yet you can get into some of these places where the trapezius muscle feathers into the base of the skull, right? This is an attachment point when we have headaches, when we have neck tension. A lot of times it's right here. If you feel lightheaded or dizzy, take, then there's too much pressure on the ball or take that ball out. Drop the shoulder and just very gently turn the head a little bit side to side. Whew. And center release. Just feel that the head is neutral. Same thing, other side. Take the ball. Just see if you can kind of get it to. A wedge between the skull and the neck, that line. This is where I get my headaches, especially if they're caffeine related. Um, they go right into the occipital area. If you find a really tender spot, just pause and breathe. Remember, you can use your hand to lessen the weight on the ball. Try to relax your jaw and just breathe nice and steady. Maybe you turn the head. It's really not even a turn. It's like the teeniest little no. You're going, nope. <laughs> Breathe. And bring the head back to center. Whew. And pause. Set the ball aside. We're going to do one other thing with this neck of ours. I'm even going to take my glasses off just to relax more. So with the hands resting either down at your sides or on the low belly, I just want you to turn your head to one side and feel that. Bring the head center. Turn the head to the other side and feel that. And then bring your head to neutral. Keep your head definitely straight, right? Keep your head right where it is, but take the eyes and press the eyes toward the right. Like you're trying to look over your right shoulder. Hold that without turning your head or turning your nose. Everything else is relaxed and just breathe. If you find that you're starting to lessen the gaze, just reestablish it, looking over your right Seeing if you can see the wall or whatever it is to the right side. Keep your head from turning that way. And breathe. Keep going. This is a really simple exercise I stumbled uh, upon uh, to access the vagus nerve, which is uh, access is our parasympathetic nervous system, our rest, digest, healing nervous system. Good. And then just bring the eyes to center. Look up at your ceiling. And then take the eyes to the left. Keep the head neutral. The article I read recommended that you do this for about 30 seconds on both sides. And then you see if any of the tension in the neck has lessened. Keep breathing. Keep looking to the left. Good, keep going.
And then bring the eyes back to center, close the eyes. Turn your head to one side. To center. And to the other side. And center. Bring both knees to chest. <sighs> Straighten one leg, keep the other one in. Take your hands behind your knee. Straighten that leg up to the ceiling. And then lower it all the way down to the floor. Bring your other knee in, squeeze it in. Hands behind, straighten that leg up. And let go and lower that leg and come into your Shavasana. So your Shavasana might be, it's just beautiful, normal legs out, arms out. Or you may find that coming back to that very first pose is appealing for uh, just a few minutes or a minute where you're in Baddha Konasana legs and the arms are overhead. Just see, see how it feels to you. Softening down. Letting go. Feeling the breath move through your body, feeling your body calm, peaceful. If you happen to still be in Baddha Konasana, I would take those knees together and then allow the legs to straighten and allow the arms to come down from overhead. Let them rest on the belly or beside you. Soften down even more. And as you're ready, take a deep breath. Start to bend your knees. Draw your knees to your chest. 
and rock side to side. Allow the knees to curl over. And then as you're ready, press up. Come to a seat. And bring your hands to your heart. As we love ourselves, we can love others even more. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you. Whew. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>